No, not really. That's a little bit of misdirection there. Hello, I'm Bruce Janey, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to look at a demonstration of thermoacoustics. Uh, this is a famous device called a Reiki tube, and it's one of my favorites. So, let's take a closer look. Now the build for this is fairly simple. I need a pipe and I've tried a variety of different sizes and materials. For example, I have copper, glass, aluminum, stainless steel, galvanized pipe. I've even used cardboard as long as I'm careful. The next thing I need is screening. Uh, I found that regular window screen doesn't work nearly as well as stainless steel. We need a heat source and for that I'd use a propane torch. I'd also suggest using a piece of cardboard and of course we have gloves for safety. Now let's take a look at the build. To start I cut a small piece of screen and folded it three times and next I'm going to take and bend the edges down using some pliers. What I want to do is simply insert that screen about one-fifth of the way into the pipe and I found if I use two dowels I can keep it even inside the tube. Somewhere around there should be good. Now the next step is I want to use that cardboard and roll it up and make a sleeve over the glass. Now this is actually going to serve two purposes. One is it's going to keep me from touching the glass and can you guess what the second purpose is? Well, we'll take a look at that later. So our next step then is we want to heat this. And once again, I want to use gloves. I don't want to touch the hot glass. So we're simply going to heat that screen until it gets cherry red. And when I turn it vertical, So for this to operate, it actually has to be in a vertical position. And if it's moving vertically, well, we see something else that happens. Now all these tubes will work. Let me give you a basic explanation of what's going on. To start, we know that as we heat air in the tube, it becomes less dense and rises as a convection current. So for this to work, air has to flow through it in this direction, and that's what the convection current does. So when I turn it sideways, there's no convection current, so we don't get any sound. If I add small bits of wood to the screen before I heat it, we can actually see these currents. And as I turn the tube sideways, there's no steady airflow through the tube. However, I can still create sound on the tube sideways by creating an alternative airflow. If the air's got to flow this way, I simply move the tube this way, and we get sound. We could probably even do it upside down. Let me charge this up again. So, <laughs> so as long as that screen's hot enough, and I get the air moving through, the process is going to work. Starting with the screen, it serves two purposes. It restricts the flow of air through the tube, and it's also the heat source. That screen creates a convection current that's drawing colder, denser air into the bottom of the tube. Air near the hot screen expands on both sides, pushing it upwards and downwards. This outward movement stretches the air to create a decrease in pressure around the screen. Atmospheric pressure forces air back into the tube to equalize the pressure. The upward airflow brings more cold air near the screen, heating it and expanding it to repeat the process. These rapid changes in pressure form the vibrations that make the sound. Now for this to work, we need cold air coming into the bottom. 
If the air were already heated, well, let's see what happens. If the air is already warmed, it doesn't work. Now with this larger tube, I can actually feel the air vibrating at the top and also at the bottom. These are longitudinal waves and they appear at both ends of the tube. At the bottom it can suppress a candle flame or at the top vibrate these little plastic pieces. Hopefully that gives you some idea how the sound's produced inside these pipes. Now let's go on and take a look at another factor that affects them. For example, changing the length. Here's the shortest pipe I have. Let's give this a try. It sounds very high. Here's one that's much longer. And we see that the pitch has dropped. In fact, that makes sense. Our musical instruments are based on that. We have various types of sound pipes that as we make them longer, of course, we know that the pitch will drop. Now, if we cut these pipes to the right length, we can match them up to musical notes. For example, this one is 40 centimeters long. And this one's 48 centimeters long. And this one's 60 centimeters long. Now, if we put them all together, we get a, what's called a triad. <laughs> it's a very happy sound to it. Okay, now, we see a big difference in the length of the pipes. What happens if the lengths are just slightly different? Sounds the same. Let's try them both together. There it is. The frequencies are just slightly different, so we're getting constructive and destructive interference. That's a very good example of beats. Now we can go quite a bit larger. Here's a piece of carpet tubing. It's about 45 inches long. Let's heat this one up. That should be hot enough. Let's try it. That has such a nice deep bass to it. But we can go lower still. I have another pipe over here, and this is 55 inches long. So let's try this one. It doesn't last long, but I love the sound of these longer tubes. Now up until this point, all these tubes have played a single note dependent on its length and a little bit by its temperature. Now let's look at a way of changing that. Now at the beginning of this video, I said this sleeve would serve two purposes. Let's take a look at the second use. All right, that should be good. Now there's our original frequency, and if I move the sleeve... I can change the pitch. So the longer the pipe is, the lower the frequency. Uh, it's kind of like a trombone, or this is my new my new version of a slide whistle. Now let's try it with one more pipe. Here's the glass one. Let's see how this one goes. Original frequency. Change it. I think with a little practice I could probably play a song. All right, now, before I go, I think I might have one more pipe. I think I'll try a piece of downspouting. Let's go see how this works. Now, there's a screen in there.
no sound. I tried this several times and didn't get any sound out of it until I changed positions of where I held it. When I move my hands down to here, it works. Let's try that again. So in this case, the pipe itself is vibrating, I can feel it, and that's helping to create the sound. So there's a lot more science going on in these pipes than I've explained today, but I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll come back and see me again. Okay, bye!